In this video, I'm going to show you how to completely mod your PS Vita to set it up with Enso Custom Firmware to unlock the full potential of your console. I will be using my PS Vita 1000 model, but this guide will work on all models of PS Vita, including the Slim and the PS TV. It will work on any region device and is for the latest firmware version 3.74. And once we get everything set up, I'm going to show you some of the best homebrew apps to get. And the best part is that we don't even need a computer. Really, all you need for this guide is a PS Vita with an internet connection, but I do highly recommend getting an SD to Vita adapter like I have here along with a micro SD card. This will give you tons of extra storage to add your favorite games and apps. And if you don't have one of those yet, you can still mod your Vita and then set up your storage later. All products I use will be linked in the description for your convenience. And of course, a quick disclaimer before we start, every time you modify a console, you risk causing a brick leaving your console unusable. This is very rare, but still possible, so I suggest you watch the video through once before following it yourself if you decide to do so. Because this is a video guide, please check the pinned comment to see if this is still up to date and refer to the official written guide and FAQ for the quickest troubleshooting help. So let's get started with the guide. It is recommended that you plug your Vita in and that way it won't run out of battery during the guide. But we can go ahead and go down to the system settings and along with having it plugged in, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom, select power save settings, and change the standby mode to after 30 minutes. Press back, and after you've changed that, click on system, system information, and double check that you are on the latest system software, 3.74. And if it's not on 3.74, just go back, go to the top, and update it through here. Mine's already updated so I'm good to go. And next up we can leave the settings and we're gonna go get started with the exploit. So head into your browser, exit there, click on the three dots and click settings, go down, make sure enable JavaScript is checked and hit delete cookies, press yes. And doing that should prevent some issues with the exploit. Now we can click the address bar, and here you can just type exactly what I am. So go ahead and type that and hit enter. And you should see the screen. And if you don't see this screen, you can restart your console and try it again. Or you can try removing your PSN account without formatting your device. But we're simply going to press unlock my Vita. Press unlock and it should load this screen right here. Now, if you have a PS Vita 1000 like mine, we have an extra step to go through first before continuing from this part. But if you are on a PS Vita 2000 or a PS TV, you can skip to the timestamp right on the screen here and continue from this page. So just a reminder, this part is only for Vita 1000 owners. Go down to replace near with Vita deploy and press X press square to continue and it will download Vita deploy and then reboot your system and once your console reboots go back to the browser and we're gonna run the same exploit again it should automatically load the same web address press on unlock my Vita and unlock again and we're gonna go back to that page and this time we're going to go down to install Henkaku and click X. All done. It'll go back up to exit and press X on exit. And now we can go down all the way to the system settings again. And you should now see Henkaku settings right here. So we're going to go down to there. And the first thing that we're going to change is enable unsafe homebrew. Press back and we can close our settings. And now we're gonna launch the Vita Deploy app. Go down to miscellaneous and press X. Go all the way down and we are gonna press X on create internal memory card. There will be a disclaimer here. Press X to continue. My camera really doesn't wanna focus. And if your app crashed, close the app and try opening it again. But once you're here, we're going to go down to the second option, default to XXX storage configuration, and press X. 
and then press any key to reboot. The PS Vita 1000 does not have an internal memory, so that is what we just did. Just set it up with the proper storage so that we can set up our homebrew. And once it restarts, we're going to go down to the settings yet again. Go down to format. And before we move on, if you have a memory card inserted, just take it out for this step. What we're going to be doing here is reformatting our actual system. You can technically get away without doing this, but that can cause issues down the line. So it's better to do this now before any of that happens. Once you've made sure you don't have a memory card inserted, press X on format, restore this system, press X and disclaimer, but we're good. Press X on restore, press yes, yes. Click on yes, next, and format. Press yes, and it will restart. And just go through the setup. And once your system is rebooted, we can go into system settings. And if you go down to system, go into system information, and you should see your memory card is there. That is the one gigabyte internal memory storage that we just created. So we are good to go with the guide. But before continuing, we do need to add network back. We need to add our Wi-Fi back. So I'll do that quick. And once you have yours connected as well, we also have to go and change our power settings again because it was reset because of that system format. So just change it back to after 30 minutes. We can exit the settings and we're gonna go back up to the browser and do that exploit again. Hit OK, hit unlock my Vita, and unlock, and it should bring us back to the Henlo screen. And there we go. So at this point, we just created our one gigabyte internal storage for our PS Vita 1000, and we are now at the same step as the other consoles as well. So it doesn't matter what model you have, we're at the same point. We're gonna go down to install Henkaku, press X, Go down to install Vita Deploy and press X and it will download. And all done and now we're just going to press X on exit. Perfect. Now we can go into our settings, go into Henkaku settings and enable unsafe homebrew. Press B and then we can close the settings menu. So now we are ready to install Enso, which is the custom firmware we're setting our Vita up with. So down below here, you should see the Vita Deploy app. Select it and start it. We're gonna go down to install a different OS, press X, and press X on quick 3.65 install. And it will run. And it's important not to let your Vita go into sleep mode at this point, so that is why we changed the auto sleep setting. But if you did not, just toggle your left stick once in a while and you should avoid that issue. But let us do its thing, it will take a little bit, so I'll meet you back when it's done. And this is a good spot to say, make sure to smash that like button if this guide is helping you out. And once it's completed, it'll bring us to this screen, press X to confirm and it gives us this disclaimer to read for the next 20 seconds. This software is gonna make permanent changes to your Vita, and if anything goes wrong, there's no recovery. So the creators of this exploit do not take any responsibility. Please continue at your own risk. But once that 20 seconds is up, press X to accept these terms and start the installation. And here we go. What it's doing is downgrading your system software to 3.65. And along with that, it is installing Henkaku Enso, the custom firmware. So we'll just wait for this to finish and then it'll reboot into your custom firmware mode. But there will be a couple steps after that, so keep watching. And again, don't let it go into sleep mode when you're doing this. But there we go, it will reboot. And we're back on and it is in custom firmware mode, but we're not done yet. We need to finalize our setup. So now we're gonna go down back to Vita deploy app and load it up. Go down to app downloader and select it. And we're gonna go down to ITLS installer, press X, go back up and press X on downloaded the selected apps and it will download. 
And once you see all apps have been successfully installed, just click the PlayStation button, close Vita Deploy, and you should see ITLS and so. And open it up. And it should be highlighted on install the full ITLS package. We're gonna click X and it will install. And there we go, it will now reboot your console. We're back on, and now we need to block system updates so it doesn't try to update back to 3.74. So we're gonna go down into system settings again. Go down all the way to system. And as you can see, you are on 3.65. But we are going to select the auto start settings here and then make sure download update file for system software is unchecked press back back and then once you're back in your settings we're going to go into Henkaku settings so double check that enable psn spoofing and enable version spoofing are enabled go down to spoon fed version and we're going to back and make it 3.74 press enter we can back out back out and close your settings so now that we have our custom firmware set up it is time to set up our storage so if you don't have this you can skip it for now there will be stuff at the end of the video that will be useful to you regardless of whether you have it or not but I have this 32 gigabyte micro SD card. I would suggest a name brand like SanDisk, but times are tough, this is what I got. I'm gonna place it inside and don't push too hard, but just make it so it's flush with the top. But now we can go ahead and insert this into our Vita. Why is that so difficult? Have it inserted. And now we can go down to Vita Deploy yet again. Start it up. Go down to miscellaneous, press X. Go down to format storage device, press X. And the target should be SD to Vita and the file system should be text fat. And then hit X on format target storage. Perfect, it's formatted, press X on OK. If it failed for any reason, just double check that you inserted it properly and that you didn't push it in too far. And if it keeps not working after changing anything, it may be a faulty SD to Vita card, or you need to try a different SD card. But we can press back, back, and go down to reboot device. We'll let it reboot. And once you're back on, there's one more app we need to get, so go into Vita Deploy, start it up, go down to app downloader, and we're just gonna grab this Vita shell right here, so. Click on that and then download selected app. And once it says you can exit, go ahead and exit. And before we go in there, we need to go into settings. Go down to devices, storage devices, and we're gonna check use YAMT. So make sure that's checked. UX0 should be default and UMA0 should be SD to Vita. And then just hold the power button and power off. Power your device back on. And now we're gonna go into the Vita Shell app we just downloaded. Start it up. If you get a black screen, just wait and be patient. Sometimes it takes a little bit. But once you see this screen, go down all the way to UX0. Let me bring it a little closer. UX0 right here. Select it, press down on the D-pad so that app is highlighted and then triangle. This will bring up our menu and then just select mark all so that everything is highlighted. Press triangle again and we're gonna go to copy. Press copy, we're good there. We can press back and now navigate to UMA0 right there, select it. Go down so the only folder is highlighted and press triangle again to bring up this menu and we are going to hit paste. So select paste, and it will paste everything to your SD to Vita. Just let it do its thing, and we are all done there. Now we can back out of Vita shell and close it. Go back up to your settings. Go back to devices, storage devices, and now we are gonna set UX0 to SD to Vita and UMA0 
and we're going to select memory card. But if you're not using a physical memory card, just set it to internal storage. This will most likely be the case if you have a 1000 model like me. And now we are going to hold the power button, power off, and then reboot our device. And once you're back on, we just have to double check that it all went smooth. So go into your settings, go all the way down to system, system information, and you should see you now have more capacity. So mine was 32 gigabytes, so I have 28 gigabytes available to add games onto. And speaking of that, since we are all done with our homebrew, I will show you some of the best apps to get on your Vita. So head back into Vita Deploy and we'll grab a couple really helpful things. Go down to your app downloader. We'll start off with Vita DB Downloader. This is like a homebrew app store. It's really, really useful. Keep going. Adrenaline is a PSP emulator. I'm not gonna do it on this video, but keep an eye out for future videos for a more in-depth in video on that one. PKGJ. You should definitely get this, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it. That's really all I can do. But Custom Themes Manager, we're gonna grab that one as well. You can get custom themes and you can explore the rest, but those are the probably best um, apps on this app downloader. So let's download them and we're good. We're good to exit, close, and you should have them on your screen. Definitely get the PKGJ app. I'm just not gonna do that on this video. <laughs> You'll find out eventually. Custom Themes Manager looks pretty awesome. And Vita DB. The first time you run Vita DB, it is quite the process, but it, you'll see this page when you're ready to go and you can download homebrew apps. And Vita DB is especially good if you have any outdated apps, you can update them directly on your PS Vita. So if you download your apps and they aren't working, check Vita DB and see if they are out of date and then give them an update and they should work. Themes Manager, you can download custom themes made by people online and get them on your own Vita, which is pretty sweet. Definitely check out the PKGJ app and get yourself set up with even more to do. And I would greatly appreciate it if you would smash that like button. It really helps me out. And if you want more guides in the future, make sure to keep an eye out for my newest videos. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Stay funky and happy modding. <laughs>